me, we are led to find some wonder. Let me hear you say hallelujah. hallelujah. Give Jesus a big hand this morning. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Just put your eyes on me this morning for one minute. How many of you have been in this ministry for 10 years? Good. Five years. Two years. Since two years you've been here. Let me see your hand. Good. You've been here now for one year. Let me see your hand. Good. Thank God. Well, I have been here before some of you. I've been here more than 10 years. I saw the bet of what God is doing today. Aren't you glad that what you are a part of is a living organ? Yes. Let me hear you say hallelujah. hallelujah. Join hand with someone on your left and right. Make sure you are standing even when you are sick. God still raised people up. Two months ago, I called the bishop. Hold your hand with someone. It's part of my prayer. Now the Lord wants me to be here today. I have so much doing at home at this time because of our national situation. But God told me over two months ago I should be here today. And he said, what a befitting thing. Carlton will be here. And I know this week, God has honored his name in this place. That's not the end. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. It is just the beginning. You wouldn't believe that when I first came to Chapel Hill, this church was about 500 people. And God told me, say to them, this will one day become children's church. The Lord said to me, after two years, tell them they are going to cross to the other part of the street. And the bishop looked at me and said, mm. <laughs> Well, I don't come here and except God has something to say. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, all that has happened, happened for us to know those that are our people. Listen to me. I ask you to put your eyes on me. Have you ever had people around you, you thought they were all your friends, until something happened to you? And then you came to find out that those you thought were your enemy were really your friends. And then your friends, one by one, take so many excuses and go. Well, a few years ago, our ministry started with five children and seven adults. And today we have seven million members. Hallelujah. All I thought were my friends, when we were small, are not there now. But those I didn't know are there. God knows how to do it well. Yes. And God will do it better than you and I. Yes. I'm not going to shout as I used to. I'm not going to preach as I used to. I came to deliver a letter from God to you all mm -hmm. and to myself. And at the end of the day, you'll be glad you are here. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Just glorify your name this morning. Yes. With signs and wonders. Yes. More than anything else, Lord. let hearts be open to hear what you have to say. We are grateful we saw the bet of the revival of this ministry. We are grateful you told us we who saw the breakthrough shall not see the memorial. It shall leave till Jesus come back. Bless your people with hearing ears this day. And let the word that will come out of my mouth become a seed. That will help everyone plus myself 
to do greater things for the kingdom extension. Thank you for Bishop Polk and the team. Thank you for the saints that have stood by to say it is your work, it shall not die in my time. Glorify your name. Glorify your name. Yes. Glorify your name. Hallelujah. And let your name be glorified. Yes. I thank you for these lives. Do something tangible for everyone today. At the end, take all the glory. Give your people the blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Remain standing for one minute while I want to do what I want to do before you sit down. This time last Sunday, I was in Russia. The crusade I went for was taking place in a sanctuary that National Center that took 9,800 people. But the third day, we could not use there anymore. We have to move to their stadium in Russia. And today I'm here. In the middle of the message, the third night, the Lord asked me to say this to them in Russia. You call this in American English, baton. We call it batting in English. It's something used by people who do relay. Four people on a team. One, two, three. Can you come? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you still run? When was the last time you ran? <laughs> this morning. Good. To the bathroom. To the bathroom. You came back. <laughs> you know... <laughs> I have problem at home. <laughs> I say to people at home, why do people who know you when you were small never you see you big? I know you didn't hear that in America. In my country, when you know somebody as a boy, even if you become the president of the nation, you still look at him as a boy. He is the big brother to him. That's why he said to the bathroom. <laughs> no one else could say that to Don this morning. <laughs> Except the brother or the wife. The Lord said to me in Russia, if the baton fall from the anchor man's hand, baton doesn't change hand. If we are to do a relay race and I am the anchor man, and I hear the gun or the whistle, bam, and I drop the button. Mm -hmm. This man, no matter how good he is, and no matter how very good she is, and no matter how very, very good he can run, if the first man lose the button, the hope of the last three destroyed. And God said to me to tell the Russian people, don't let the button drop from your hands. Don't let it fall. No matter how sweaty you are, no matter how anxious you are to win the race, hold it tight. When the going gets tough, get going. You may be seated. When I look at people like Bishop Park, Ora Roberts, Lester Sumro, and many people who have been in the ministry for 50 years and above, and I look at the few years I have been in the ministry, 35 years. I think of two things. Lester Sumro, 50 years. Almost 60 years in the ministry. Billy Graham, over 50 years. Ora Robert, over 50 years. 
And by next year, it will be 50 years since Bishop Paul was ordained to the ministry. And I look at taking 50 years out of my life, what is left? My own life. By September 11, I'll be 55. And uh, these people are still there. In storm, in winter, in dry season time, what you call summer, rainy season time, 50 years in the ministry. I asked myself, could it be that somebody like Lester Sombro, T.L. Osborne, Laura Robert, and Billy Graham, or Bishop Park, have never experienced opposition? Then I remember that a few years after I came into the ministry, one of the first things I asked was, from a man whom I knew, knew God very well. I said, how do you endure difficult times? And he said to me, the only way you can know how to endure difficult time is to read your Bible very well. That was not what I wanted to hear. Eleven years later, I asked another man, why do God not show preachers the pains ahead? Why don't he show us what we are to see in the front? Always showing us the crown and not the tones. And the Holy Spirit said to me, if God were to show you the tones, you will run. That's why it shows you the end from the beginning. Then I came to United States 23 years ago. First time in my life I saw boxing on television. 23 years ago was the first time I saw physical boxing on TV. And it was a very, very well-announced fight between Muhammad Ali and someone. <laughs> In round two, Muhammad Ali slipped and fell. I thought it was a knockout. And I watched as the referee counted. One, two, three, four. I told the people in the room, that's the end. The people said, no, it's not the end. He's resting. I said, no. He's dead. In my country, when you are resting, people can know. But this is dead. They say, he's not dead. He's picking up courage. He's gaining strength. He will soon get up. When I heard seven, this man jumped up and the referee went to him and said, are you all right? He said, sure. And uh, the fifth round, he knocked out the man that knocked him down. And I said, God, I was asking the man on television. I didn't know he wasn't hearing me. I said, you knocked him down before. Why did you get up for you to do what he did? They counted ten and he was still on the floor. The one that got up after five counts won the fight. Then a few years later, I came back to the United States and saw wrestling on TV. You can laugh at me this morning, I'm telling you my life. There's no wrestling on television before that time in my country. And someone carried someone up like basket, 
knocked him down, boom! And the man climbed up, <laughs> coming down like a hawk, only to jump on the man he already laid down. And the man pushed up. And the one who jumped down was injured. And I said, what's America telling me? <laughs> the man they knocked down refused a knockout. And the man that is now beaten flat, shifted for the man who came from up to get injured. Few years later, they began to send this film to Nigeria. And every week that I'm in Nigeria, anytime, sports time is a time I don't pray. <laughs> when it's time for that one hour spot, I leave prayer alone. I watch wrestling and I watch boxing for two reasons. Only in Christianity, people that fall remain on the ground. When boxers are knocked down, they refuse to accept a knockout. They get up, they dust off, they clean their hands. Sometimes they are bleeding. Many times their eyes are swollen, almost covered. They still come forward to fight. But in Christianity, even a push, not even a blow, just a push, the saints sit down, one, two, nine, ten, eleven, twenty. Boxers get up, wrestlers get up, Christians lie down. And one day the Lord said to me, the reason is they don't fight good fight. They lose before they enter the ring. Every prize fighter is an enduring person. They run in the morning. They lift heavy irons. They do exercise. They train. They learn the act of endurance. Sometimes you are watching boxing. You hear what they call upper court. My God. You hear your own cheek. Boom. You think that's the end. It's not true. It's going ahead. Why is it that we don't borrow the nature of endurance, hard heat, big blow from boxers and wrestlers? When of a truth we know that the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in high places so out of wrestlers boxers fighters the Lord showed me a scripture that has helped me for years Genesis chapter 26 I'm reading verse 1 and 2 then go straight to verse 12. As I said, I'm going to try to see if I can be like Bishop Park to stay here and talk to you. Verse 1. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philippines, unto Gerah. 
verse 2 and the Lord appeared unto him and said go not down into Egypt dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of let me read verse 3 sojourn in this land say that with me everybody and I will be with thee say that loud and we bless thee for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto thy father right verse 2 read that with me loud and the Lord appeared unto him and said go not down into Egypt dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of the first time the Arab nations particularly Saudi Arabia open their doors for Nigerians to come as doctors, nurses, and professors. The total academic strength of our nation went down 70%. All our doctors and nurses that were very, very reliably leaned lean upon by the government fled to Saudi Arabia. Because they heard that what they get in Nigeria a year, they get it in Saudi in one month. And the Lord told me to turn this scripture to the people who stayed. It's true, crisis brought famine. It's true, the money that you will make in foreign land, in one month, is what those of you at home will make in one year. But God said to Isaac, stay. Sojourn in this land. Stay in this land. And I will be with thee. Stay here. I, God, will be with thee. Don't go away. Stay. If you want me to be with you, stay. So I told the doctors in the church, the nurses in the church, stay here. God says he will bless you. Let's look at the covenant that God gave here. Verse 3. I will be with thee. Promise number 1. And we bless thee. Promise number 2. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. I, 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 four times. I learned from here that the people that God will bless most are those who stayed with God. Somebody say amen. Many times, the gift of endurance is not in the church. Many, many, many times, we are the hallelujah people. We are the saints that are only a part of what is finished. We do not stay where there's smoke and fire. 
We like to be where everything is quiet. One of my brother in Germany wrote me a letter. I said, sir, I know you are very influential at home. I need you to help me get a plot of land in a very, very quiet place. And I look around the whole city. There was only, there's only one quiet place, cemetery. <laughs> so I wrote him and I said, I found the land. All your neighbors are quiet. They don't look for trouble. They are very peaceful. And the land is free. He said, where? And I said, cemetery. Where they bury the dead. He said, I don't want it. I said, that's the only quiet part of town. Every other place in the city, there's noise. There are troubles. And he rejected the offer. I'm here today to ask you, is it the Lord that put you here? How many of you think God put you here? Let me see your hand high above your head, not just near your eyes. How many of you can sincerely say, it is God that brought me here today? Even if you are here visiting. All right. As far as I'm concerned, it is God that knitted my life and the bishop's life together. The dead do us begin. You know the covenant people say marriage, till dead do us part. This man is till dead do us begin. That's not just the end. It's for eternity. Can you say amen? amen? We know what God says to us. Now God came to Isaac. I wouldn't have expected that when crisis hit and famine hit the nation, that Isaac will see God. But verse 2 says, And the Lord appeared to Isaac and said to him, Stay here. When you stay, I will be with thee. If I were you, I would say amen to that. If you stay, I will be with thee. I will bless thee. And out of thy seed. How can God be talking to a man just married, no children? And God is already seeing his seed seed. Out of thy seed shall all the countries be blessed. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Few years ago, the Lord told us that this church is going to be a warehouse. A clearing house for the world. It's going to be a storehouse that people will come from different nations to take from what is here and take home. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Well, whether you believe it or not, as this church started to grow in music and grow in arts, I began to send people here. And from here, first time, we took the act of good sanctuary choir home. And I'm glad to tell you, what we borrowed from here has increased. 750 voices on Sunday morning. We borrowed it from here. And if you have lost what God gave you, get it back. The tendency of running away wherever there is crisis is not the will of God. Christians who are standing by to hear of problem and flee are not God's children. They have found the church but have not found Christ. So, 
God said to Isaac, stay here. It's true, there's famine. It's true, there's trouble. But don't move. If you want me to bless you, stay here. And the Lord said to him, thank you. Stay where you are. I will bless you. I will bless your seed seed. Out of your children, the whole world will be blessed. Aren't you glad that steadfastness and commitment do not end with you, but a promise to your own children? Somebody say amen for that. God said to Isaac, you are just the beginning, but your children's children will experience my blessing. And Isaac said, yes, Lord. Verse 12. Out of need. Verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land, the land that there was famine. The land where there was crisis. The land where there was pain. The land that had problem. Isaac sowed in that land. Isaac didn't jump and leave. He had confidence in that land. I saw one of our sisters from the choir just now. I hugged her, not Clarice. Clarice vowed to be here till Jesus come. <laughs> but someone who was not herself, I hugged her and said, I want to thank God for you and for your steadfastness. What happened here in the last few months is a test case. It's a question who is on the Lord's side? It's for us to know long-time visitors from Jesus committed people. You didn't hear that. God used it to show us. Know that I've been here for 10 years, 15 years as long-time visitors. They were long-time visitors. Baptized visitors. Pay tight visitors. Had membership card visitors. Attended catechism visitors. Visitors stay when it's convenient. And they go when heat comes. And in every church in the whole world, I have now by last week preached in 122 nations. All over the globe. There are many visitors in the choir. Among the elders. And among the pastors. They are there. When everybody say hallelujah. But when hit the hallelujah comes. When pain hallelujah comes, when trouble hallelujah comes, <laughs> Isaac sold, say that with me, in that same land, the same year. You can't sow to where you don't want to reap. Isaac sowed. He saw the famine. He saw the pain. He saw the troubles. He went inside the seed he had. He sowed it. Listen to what God, how God punished him for sowing. Let's see how God disgraced him for sowing. And he received 
are my year close on your door. In the same year, uh huh, and hundredfold, and the Lord, and the Lord, bless him. Say to your neighbor, the Lord is going to bless you. He sowed. He reaped. Hundredfold. The same year. Glory to God. Somebody say hallelujah with me. He sowed. In the subject of economy. You are told. When there is hardship. Hold your money. But in Bible life, when there's hardship, release your money. When you release it, you receive it. When you hold it, you kill it. Your hand is not as wide as God's hands. Your hand is not as good as God's hands. Brother, there's nothing you can do well that God cannot do better. Amen. Is anybody hearing me? God says, stay. If I were you, I would jump up and say, I'm going to stay. I say, I would jump up and say, I'm going to stay. Stand up and say, I'm going to stay. Everybody get up and say, I'm going to stay. So receive. My hundredfold blessings the same year in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Can you still stand with me for one minute? In my church at home, I teach them how to stand. One minute. And please. Just know that it's not an American preacher preaching this morning. If you are not in wheelchair, somebody next to you will carry you up. Please stand when I say stand. This is Cathedral of the Holy Spirit. Now, give me five minutes while you are standing before you sit down. Verse 13. And the man works great. Look at that. The man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. Are you willing to receive that? Yes. Many Nigerians that left for Saudi Arabia are coming back with different sicknesses. Those who stayed with me, I told them, we will know who is on the Lord's side. If you stay, God says, I will be with thee. I will bless thee. Isn't it good enough to know that God is with you? Isn't it most wonderful to know that God didn't only say, I will be with you, but he says, I will bless thee. Yes. We have a God who be with us and bless us. Amen? Amen. And the man works great and went forward in the year of famine. How can that be? The year of famine is a year when everything gets bad. But this man went forward. He went forward. He grew. He worked strong. And the Lord blessed him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. How do we know those who are on the Lord's side? When things happen 
adversarially. Those who stand by God become testifiers. I say you will testify. You will testify that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. He stayed. He planted seed. He works great. All who ran away. If you read this same story, from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 1 to 6. A man in that book ran away. He killed his wife. I killed his two sons and killed himself for running from God to run to the enemy's territory. Elimelech died. Isaac lived. What's the difference? Where you are running to is not the answer. Who is with you is a power. And this morning, God is with you. I said, the Lord is with you. Let's read it again. And the man works great. Is that in your Bible? The 13th verse. Read it by yourself. How can Isaac make progress, became very great, work strong? Because God told him, I will be with thee. Can you say amen? amen. I haven't told you yesterday, Bishop, I was, uh, I'm, I'm telling you now. We've commenced the building of our university. No money in Africa, but there's God. I think God is bigger than dollar. God is bigger than dollar. God is bigger than dollars. God is bigger than dollars. We've started the university. First classes may start in October. No money. Yes, God. Where there is God, there's miracle. Somebody say hallelujah to that. The man worked great. He sowed. He reaped. He was great. He went forward. Sit down so we can go into this lesson. The 14th verse. For he had possession of flocks, possession of herbs, and great store of servants. Where all others lack. He had possessions. That is what God wants to do for his church. Taking them from obscurity. Taking them from mediocrity. Taking them from lack and want. Taking them to make them example in the face of lack and want. That the world may say, blessed is he. That has the Lord God. Can I hear you say big hallelujah? hallelujah. Isaac in famine had possessions of flocks, possession of heads, possession of stores of servants. Isaac had more than enough when others had nothing. Why? He stayed. Say with me, he stayed. He stayed. 
Say it again. Try it one more time. He stayed. The last line here didn't quite go well with me. I thank God it doesn't happen in America. The last line there. And the Philippines envied him. That's the only thing that doesn't happen in America. Thank God for United States. No envy. No jealousy. No accusation. No insult. Only miracles. He did what everyone say it can be done. Twelve years ago, this ministry was like any other ministry. Die when it's time to die. Be happy when everybody is happy. Prosper when everybody is prospering. That was what this ministry was before 12 years ago. And 12 years ago, God's spirit hit this church and said, don't be like everyone else. Be what I want you to be. And suddenly this church got up and built K-Center. Built K-Center. Where for long, everybody had known that it was an integrated church of black and white. But this church became one of the first churches that the black people began to come more than the whites. 